back to my channel um so for today's video i have mcdonald's breakfast i got two um egg and cheese biscuits two sausage egg and cheese mcgriddles and one sausage egg and cheese mcmuffin um and for everything that has sausage in it i just said no sausage when i ordered it and then i just added Gardein has like these veggie sausage breakfast things so I just added that to it um, and then I also have hotcakes and two hash browns so <laughs> let's just get started because I'm freaking hungry <laughs> that's so good And then I also got some iced coffee. Um, I got a regular latte with um, some sugar-free vanilla in it. Mmm. The biscuit is like surprisingly really flaky. Which is good. I'm just gonna move this to the floor so I don't hit it over, but. And then for today's video, I'm also gonna tell a short story time. Um, like a cringe date story time, I guess. So, it's not like anything crazy long, but <laughs> I think it's funny, so I wanted to tell it. Um, so, basically, I'm just going to move these down so they, like, sit in the syrup. So I met him when me and my friend went to this party, um... It was like late when I, it was like after I had gotten off work and we just went to like this party. I think she knew some guy there that she wanted to talk to or something like that. But we went to the party and I remember like I saw him when we were standing outside like waiting to go in. I saw him and I was like, oh, to my friend, I was like, oh, he, that guy is really cute. Except for, he had white Tims on, I still remember. Like, white Tim boots. And so I was like, he'd be cute if he didn't have those white Tims on. <laughs> but obviously, like, I didn't say anything to him or I didn't go up to him just because, like, I never go up to guys, like, ever. Just, like, I'm way too shy. So I just, like, was like, oh, yeah, he's cute. And then I just, like, left it alone. Wow. I've never had, well, I've never had any of this stuff before, but I've never had a McGriddle. And it's really good, like the bun or whatever is really sweet. So, anyways, um, so I saw him at the party. Um, like for the rest of the night, I was just hanging out with my friend and like I didn't really think anything of it. So, then as I'm about to leave, I live like pretty close to where the party was and I hadn't been drinking or anything just because I usually don't drink. Um, and so I was going to walk home because my friend was going to go home with the guy that she was with. And so I was just going to walk home because I live super close and when I'm like going to leave, 
I guess the guy sees me leaving, the one that I saw. What should I call him? I'll call him Eric. Um, so Eric sees me leaving, and so he, like, meets up with me, and he's like, do you want me to walk you home? Like, are you leaving? And I was like, yeah, that's nice, you know, like, fine. And so, he walks me home, and we're just talking, um just like basic conversation and when we get to my door or whatever he asks for my number and so I give it to him because I was like you know it's he's cute it's nice that he walked me home like I'll give him my number and after that we don't really talk that much like I don't know I just don't like talking to guys that I don't know anything about I know that's weird because usually when you meet someone you don't know anything about them but for me like I just am not really interested if I don't know anything about the person which I get is the whole point of dating, but yeah, I don't know. I just usually like meeting guys at parties and stuff like that. I'm never that really that interested. So he would like text me, but I wouldn't really respond that much. Or like we, I would text him a couple times and then I would just stop replying. But then, so that was in May about, like, May or April. And then, like, we kind of continued to talk, like, on and off for a couple months until the end of summer. So around, like, the middle of August, end of August, like, we started talking more again. Because we had, like, kind of, it wasn't like we were, like, talking on and off for those three, four months. It was, like, we kind of just stopped talking completely. He hit me up again. And so we kind of started texting again. Um, so, when we started texting again, I don't know what it was, I guess maybe because he kept trying, I figured that I would actually hang out with him. Um, and so he asked me to hang out. I think I had been, like, deflecting to hang out the other times he asked me. I'm sure I just made up some excuse. Um, but this time I was like, yeah, like, let's actually hang out. He, so he was in the Navy, actually. And the Navy in Seattle is stationed in Bremerton, which is like a two-hour ferry ride away. Ooh, these are pretty good. I already put the butter on them before I was filming. So, I don't drive at that point. Well, I drive, but I didn't have a car at that point. And so he had to come from Bremerton all the way to Seattle for us to hang out. He decided that we, he was going to take me um, on the Space Needle, which if you're not familiar with Seattle, it's like the main like symbol of Seattle. Like, you know how each city kind of has like its thing. Um, the Space Needle is like a really popular tourist thing in Seattle. And so he wanted to take me there like for our date. And so I was pretty excited to go. I got like all dressed up. And so then he picked me up at my house. Because at that time, right now I live in an apartment. But at that time I was living um, at like a like, college type house more near campus. And it had like seven or eight rooms in it. So it was just like pretty much just like a house full of college kids. And so he picked me up outside of my house. And then we went to the Space Needle. And the date was okay. Like, once again, I'm just, like, really picky when it comes to dating people. Not because I feel like I'm better than people, but I just, it takes a lot for me to be interested in someone. Or, like, I feel like we really have to connect for me to want to, like, hang out with you again. And, like, the date was okay, but I don't know. Well, first of all, I didn't know he was younger than me <laughs> when... I first met him and I found out later on but I remember we were in the car going to the space you know this is just like a, a little anecdote like it's not like I didn't like him because of this but when we were on in the car going to the space needle 
Party Next Door had just put out a new album and we were listening to his song 1942 and Eric goes oh i just now realized this and i'm like what he's like this 1942 song is named after that instagram filter i was like no it's not <laughs> it's not named after instagram like in the song it literally says 1942 tequila so it was just like since he was younger than me like it's just things like that where i'm like eh, i don't know if i can like take you seriously Um, but yeah, anyways, on the date, I just feel like we didn't have much in common, like, I don't know if it's because he was shy, but usually I'm the shy one, and I felt like I had to make all the conversation, which is fine, but it was just, like, something I wasn't used to, so, in my opinion, like, we just didn't vibe that well, like, I don't know. And so for the days following that, so this was like end of August, and so for the days following, like, after the date, he just dropped me off, and like, everything was fine. For the days following that, I just wasn't really texting him as much as I was before, like, it was one of those things where like, he would text me, I might respond like a couple hours later, and then start replying, because I wasn't sure, like, I didn't want to just be like, oh, I don't like you, because... He was nice, and, like, it was nice that he took me to the Space Needle. I wasn't sure if it was, like, he was just shy, and that's why we didn't vibe well. So I was still trying to, like, figure out if I wanted to, like, hang out with him again. And so I was just texting kind of slow. But then he was, like, kind of irritating me because he kept texting me. Like, I feel like if I don't reply after the third time, like, you should just not text me anymore. Like, I'll reply when I'm ready to reply. I might be busy doing something. So, um, he, like, kept texting me or whatever, and I was getting kind of irritated because I was, just, like, like, when you're already kind of not sure if you like someone, and then they, you feel like they're just, like, bothering you. I'm, like, I guess I could have said, like, hey, chill out, but I don't really know how you say that without hurting someone's feelings. So, like, I didn't want to be rude, and I was still kind of trying to figure out if I wanted to, like, see him again or not. This is good too. I've never had this one either, but I'm like actually surprised. I've never really had McDonald's that much in general, but I'm surprised with how good their breakfast is. So, anyways, I think I'm gonna actually dip my sandwiches in the syrup because I have some left over. Like that might be good. Mm. Mm hmm I was right. So anyway, um, he's like texting me and I'm not really responding. And then, so since it was the end of the summer, I had lived at that house, but then my lease was up. And so I was going to move into this apartment that I'm at right now. Um, and so this was like a couple days after we hung out, maybe like three or four that I started moving. Um, and he didn't know that I was moving or anything like that. And so one day, like he was texting me again and he's like, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm really busy, like trying to pack up all my stuff so I can move all my crap, like down to a different apartment. And I was like, it's so much work, you know? Um, he replied something like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I was something like, oh, I wish I could help you, blah, blah, blah. Just kind of like something super vague, right? Just like, oh, I wish I could help. And I said something super vague back and I was like, oh yeah, that'd be nice, you know, just 
not thinking anything of it. Like, I thought it was just normal conversation, like, just kind of, like, bantering. Like, oh, I wish I could help, you know, even though he, I know he's two hours away. And so then I'm super busy for the rest of the day because I have to like move all my furniture that I had, all my clothes, everything like that into a different apartment. And so I wasn't on my phone like at all. Um, and so eventually like a couple hours later I'm all moved into this apartment and I'm just like unpacking my stuff. And like I said, I had not been on my phone all day. And I was unpacking my stuff. I didn't even know where my phone was. I was just trying to like get my room situated so I could go to sleep because it was pretty late at that point. And so all of a sudden I'm unpacking all my stuff and I hear my phone ringing like FaceTime. You know how FaceTime has like a specific noise? Um, and I was like, kind of confused because I never FaceTime people. Like I really hate FaceTiming. And so I was like, who would be FaceTiming me, you know? Well, eventually, I find where my phone is, and by that time, the FaceTime call is, like, already ended. But I find my phone, and I see that I have, like, four unread texts from him, from Eric. And basically, well, the last text he sent me was like, I'm here at your house. Where are you? And so then I read the rest of them. And he was saying that he was like, gonna come help me <laughs> move my stuff. Which is also weird because I had texted him like that I was moving at like 11 that morning. And when he called me, it was like 11 at night. So it's like 12 hours later. I haven't talked to you. I have literally not texted you in 12 hours and you randomly show up at my you drive two hours get on a ferry because bremerton is like a ferry right away you drive two hours get on a ferry to come help me unpack my stuff when i haven't talked to you for two hours like that's so crazy And the fact that we had never even, like, like, I had not invited you to come help me unpack. I hadn't said, yeah, come help me. Like, when you, when can you be here? When he was texting me, I hadn't been responding when he was saying he was coming. Like, you don't just randomly show up at someone's house. And so, thank God, by that point, I had already moved into the other apartment. And so, like, the fact that he was there combined with the fact that he was already kind of acting clingy in terms of, like, texting me so much, I literally just <laughs> blocked him. Because I was, like, genuinely weirded out. Like, I know that I would never 
After a guy had been kind of distant to me, we hung out one time. I would never take a ferry to his house after he hadn't been talking to me and been like, I'm here. Like, hey, I'm here. Like, no. Like, that was just like, oh my god. And so, yeah, I literally just blocked his number. I was like, I don't have time to deal with this. I'm freaking tired. So after I blocked him, I just assumed the situation would be done because I didn't think anyone would like take it this far. But <laughs> then a couple, I think actually the next day, I was in my room just chilling, like just laying down, like doing nothing. And all of a sudden my sister barges in <laughs> to my room and it's like, Megan, do you know who this person is? And so first of all, let me explain something. My sister has Instagram, right? But she has like um, a fake Instagram kind of. She doesn't even post anything on it. But she only, the only people she knows in real life that she follows are is my mom and me because she can send us stuff. Um, but other than that, like her profile picture's not of her. Her name's not of her. Like if you guys went to my Instagram, like I'd be following this Instagram, but you would never know it was her. And so she's like, do you know who this person is? So Eric had sent her a message on her Instagram that is not technically of her and was like, hey, are you Megan's twin? I've been trying to get a hold of her. Like, can you tell her to talk to me? And to add to that, literally, I never tell guys when I, like when I first meet them that I have a sister. Yeah, I, I never tell guys I have a sister because, so I don't tell guys that I have a sister when I first meet them because they always want to like hook their friends up with her and so I just don't tell them because literally every other time that a guy has tried to hook his friend up with my sister, she's always like, I'm not interested. So I just don't mention it because it's awkward for me to be like, oh, like she's not going to like your friend, you know? And so I didn't even tell Eric that I had a sister, let alone a twin. Literally, because in the message he was like, hey, are you Megan's twin? So to this day, I have no idea how he knew that I had a twin sister. Because especially on Instagram, like, we followed each other, but... Like, I never take photos with her or anything like that just because she doesn't like really taking pictures either. And so I would never post a photo with her. And even if I did, I wouldn't tag her in it because it's not her real Instagram. Like, so I literally to this day do not know how he knew that I had a twin sister. But he found her Instagram somehow and messaged her. And she, she went like when she figured out who it was or like when I told her who it was, I was like, it's literally that guy that I've hung out with like one time and he showed up here. Where he showed up in Seattle, like, after I had been talking to him all day. She was like, she messaged him back, and she was like, yes, this is her twin, but I'm going to give you a word of advice. In the future, I, like, she was <laughs> trying to be nice. She's like, in the future, I wouldn't be so clingy with girls, because it's kind of a turn off. <laughs> <laughs> And then I think she blocked him too. So, cause I don't think he, if either he didn't respond or she blocked him, but. So yeah, that's my cringe date story. I have a lot more cringe dates that I can tell if you guys like this. Um, yeah, I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys like the food too. And yeah, I will see you in my next video.